Hello, I'm Melanie the Midwife and today's research is from a very clever group of researchers. When I saw the title, I got excited and then when I saw the authors, I knew we were in for a treat. This paper was published this year, 2019, and it's called Maternal and Neonatal Outcomes from a Comparison of Spontaneous and Directed Pushing in the Second Stage. So let me define a few things before we go ahead and look at the study. This study was looking at the second stage of labor. From a clinical perspective, the second stage of labor is the time when the woman's cervix is fully dilated and she's feeling the urge to push her baby out. So it's the pushing part of labor. However, the definition of when the second stage has started can vary depending on the care provider, which is why research on this topic in the past has been difficult because different locations and different practitioners will define the commencement of the second stage differently. This research team though thought of a way to overcome this problem by using a single location or hospital to gather the data from. Then they could at least compare apples with apples when comparing outcomes rather than comparing one hospital to another. So while the research data itself has some consistency, the results might not be generalizable to other hospitals or practitioners if they define the second stage of labor differently to the hospital that participated in this study. This study looks at the outcomes for women and their babies when comparing spontaneous pushing in the second stage uh, versus directed pushing in the second stage. Now directed pushing requires a woman to push according to the instructions of her care provider. These instructions often consist of verbal direction to, of when to commence pushing and how long to push for. The use of the Valsalva manoeuvre, where the woman pushes while holding her breath, is considered a key feature of directed pushing. Women are instructed to make no noise and push for the duration of 10 seconds or more, take a breath in and repeat this for two to three times per contraction. In comparison, spontaneous pushing is self-directed by the woman and she decides her breathing pattern during contractions and while pushing. Women who are pushing spontaneously, or what I like to call physiologically, usually initiate pushing once the contraction is established and at which time they feel the urge to actually push. In spontaneous pushing, pushing may occur three to five times per contraction with brief periods of Volsalva style pushing where they are holding their breath. But they also include non-pushing breaths between each pushing effort. No verbal instruction is given other than encouragement or praise for what she's already naturally doing with her urges. Okay, so let's look at the study. Firstly, let's look at the data that was included. The authors used a pre-existing data set. Now, what does that mean? It means that the data they used for their research had been collected prior to the study commencing and it wasn't specifically collected for use in this research, which is a good thing for this study. In a hospital, once a midwife has finished helping the woman have her baby, she goes and fills out a data sheet in the hospital records. Part of that data includes asking the midwife what type of pushing was used and they can click direct, directed or spontaneous. So for this study, the midwives were entering data that they were unaware would be used for research. So hopefully this data set is relatively untainted. The study cohort or the group of women um, that were used in this study comprised of women who progressed to an unassisted vaginal birth within a major maternity hospital in Brisbane in Australia between January 2011 and December 2017, so it's over six years. The women who were included in the study, they didn't have an epidural, so these women had full use of their bodies and could feel the ebb and flow and sensation of labour. Other births excluded from this research were twins, preterm birth, breech births, and those assisted by vacuum or forceps. So what we have is a group of women who are mobile, who can feel labor, who are full term with a single baby that is head in a head down position. So this is the group of women that we could apply these findings to. The study included about three paragraphs of detail about how they could, how they grouped the participants so they could be fairly compared. The authors aim to create two equal groups one with women who were directed to push and the other with women who spontaneously pushed. And they made these groups as identical as possible 
and without going into too much detail, the process they described to create two equal groups was very rigorous and each had 5,000 women in each. So 10,000 births in total were included in this study. Now, if you're interested in further detail about how the groups were sorted, please do make contact through my website, www.melaniethemidwife.com and I'm happy to send you the full details. But from what I can see, the research process here was rigorous and of great quality. So now the authors have a reliable data set a single location uh, at which the study uh, was done, reducing the variability of including multiple sites and equally matched cohorts of participants with good enough numbers to make statistical conclusions. So what did they do with the data? They compared the duration of the second stage of labor, rates of third or fourth degree tears, episiotomy rates, the need to resuscitate the baby, the condition of the baby at five minutes of age, and the need for the baby to be admitted to intensive care unit for babies. The authors gave us the results of both data for groups for when they were unmatched and also for when they were matched. So when they were put into the two equal 5,000 member groups. I'm only gonna comment here on the match data as these were the more accurate results. So what they found was that the duration of the second stage of labor was significantly longer in the directed pushing group compared to the spontaneous group for both first time mothers and those having their subsequent babies. So encouraging women to push spontaneously and to go with their urges rather than using directing push, directed pushing will help her have a shorter second stage according to this research. The rates of third and fourth degree tears were higher in the directed pushing group but it wasn't considered statistically significant. The use of episiotomy in the directed pushing group was significantly higher than the spontaneous pushing group. In the spontaneous pushing group, 18.4% of women had an episiotomy. In the directed pushing group, 36% had an episiotomy and that is a big difference and a hell of a lot of episiotomies. For the neonatal outcomes, uh, directed pushing was associated with an increased need for active resuscitation and admission to special care nursery. So the authors concluded that the use of directed pushing may not reduce the duration of the second stage, may be associated with an increased use of episiotomy and also an increase in avoidable negative neonatal outcomes. Their study provides support to the practice of women following their own spontaneous expulsive urges during the second stage with only verbal praise and encouragement from their care providers. So if you're a woman, the take home message is that if you feel the urge to push your baby out, go ahead and feel confident that your body will know what to do. If you're a birth clinician, you can feel confident that a woman's body will be able to push a baby out quicker with less perineal trauma and with better outcomes for her baby if you encourage her to go ahead and push with her urges rather than give directed instruction on how to push. I'm Melanie the Midwife and if you found this helpful, pass it on 